Así que vamos a recibir a Doug, que no sé dónde está, porque sin los anteojos no veo más allá de aquí. Hasta ahí. Thank you. Uh, before you start, um, we have translation over there with that thing. Oh, you have your own. I'm ready. Okay. Y para los demás, esto era solamente para hacerlo hablar a Mauro en inglés, pero pueden hacer las preguntas en su idioma y eh, el presentador recibe la traducción instantánea. Así que muchas gracias. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Doug Midori, and this is a talk about uh, some routing incidents that we observed and wrote up in the last uh, few months. These are fairly recent. I think uh, later this afternoon we're going to hear uh, from Cloudflare about some of the uh, security, uh, routing security measures they're rolling out, and uh, uh, I think Job's going to talk about routing security tomorrow. Uh, this is more focused, less on the solution, but going over once again some of the problems that we're uh, trying to resolve. So these issues are worthy of consideration as we think about what are the uh, the incidents, what are the, the measures we try to roll out to improve routing security. We're going to talk about three, uh, three incidents, or three, three stories here. And the first two are very related, they're very similar. In each case, these are uh, incidents where we observed B2B hijacks in order to implement a DNS hijack in order to uh, ostensibly steal uh, money or crypt uh, cryptocurrency in the first case. And then the last one is a story of the uh, NOG community coming together to try to remove a bad actor uh, from the internet and how that went. So, I don't know if it'll translate, but uh, it's a slide here if you don't understand cryptocurrency. I'm still working on it myself. So let's talk about this first hijack here where um, the targeted Amazon's Route 53 authoritative DNS service. So we saw this hijack take place. Uh, we monitor uh, for uh, kinds of routing incidents uh, every day. Um, we put out a tweet on this one because we saw people, people were having some problems. Um, if you don't follow us, you ought to follow us on Twitter, uh, Internet Intel. If you are following Renesis or Dyne Research, then you are also a follower of this because this is the latest rebranding as we go through our acquisitions. Um, nonetheless, the, uh, uh, as we were putting this out, I was also uh, com becoming aware of a, uh, a simultaneous DNS hijack of this My Ether wallet, uh, <coughs> cryptocurrency wallet service that seemed to uh, coincide timing wise and sure enough as we put the pieces together these things were in fact related so the way this unfolded was uh, this host small hosting provider out of Ohio uh, Excel host suffered a breach and outside attackers were able to reconfigure uh, one of their core routers to make announcements to the outside world that would hijack uh, the address space of Amazon's route 53 authoritative DNS service these were the slash 24s they announced. And here's a couple of graphs here of, of, a, of a couple, two of the five. Um, in these graphs, we use these to try to uh, convey you know, how, how long and how far a route uh, is propagating uh, or propagated. In this case, uh, the, the duration, the x-axis, is about two hours. And the y-axis is a percentage of our peering base, so about 400 uh, uh, full tables we get from our, our peering sources. And so we saw you know, maybe about 17% or so of our uh, uh, sources carried these hijacked routes. However, because it was picked up by some popular uh, uh, public DNS recursives, the effect was amplified very greatly because they have, these things have very wide audiences that make use of these services. So uh, as we'll see, it'll come back a couple times. You don't have to have a, uh, a route that gets really widely propagated to have a global impact. So here's how this, uh, this uh, went down to do this B2B hijack in order to do a DNS hijack. So as users were trying to visit the myetherwallet.com uh, uh, site, they would encounter their uh, recursive DNS uh, service, which would, if it's not cached, would go through uh, root.com and then send a query on to the legitimate authoritative DNS server. Of course, uh, this would be re redirected because there was a BGP hijack there. It would re redirect it to a, uh, an imposter, authoritative DNS server, ready and waiting for this to take place in order to return a, a, a fake uh, IP or a, a, a malicious IP uh, that was not the correct IP. 
It was, a, in this case, an IP address in eastern Ukraine that would direct users to a, an imposter site that was identical. Uh, once they logged in, then their wallets would be emptied of, uh, of their currency. That's how the... Um, that's how this would work. So one thing, you know, ourselves and some other folks who wrote this up initially uh, reported this as an IP address in Russia, and um, we can be forgiven because uh, this, this IP address is actually in this Republic of Luhansk, which is a kind of a breakaway republic in Ukraine. Uh, they speak Russian, uh, they are allied with Russia, and nearly exclusively they use Russian internet transit, so it looks a lot like Russia, Russian internet. Nonetheless, uh, my Ether wallet put out a, a statement earlier in that day uh, confirming what had taken place. We, we had to issue a little bit of a correction as far as what precisely was uh, hijacked. Um, and, uh, and some people have tr ventured to try to estimate how much money was stolen on this day uh, in the course of this you know, BGP slash DNS hijack. Uh, I don't know what the number is. It stands to reason that it's substantial. So just a few months later, we saw something, uh, a nearly identical uh, type of attack. It's very similar and it has some differences. In this case, though, the target wasn't a, uh, an obscure cryptocurrency wallet uh, service. This was the, the major U.S. payment processors. And while these companies may not be household names, uh, these are the companies that handle nearly all of our credit card transactions and business-to-business -business transactions that take place over the Internet. Uh, these companies move billions of dollars, so if there's a good target to go after, uh, these, these guys would be it. The way this unfolded was that we, a little formatting issue here, so we saw Digital Wireless Indonesia uh, announce these slash 24s on the 6th of July. It lasted about 30 minutes, the, prop, uh, the routes didn't propagate very far, uh, it went away. And then on the 10th, it came back. Uh, but from extreme broadband in neighboring Malaysia, announcing the exact same five prefixes. So what was special about these slash 24s? Were well, they all uh, hosted authoritative name servers for these, the biggest payment processors in the world? One of which was DataWire, which on its site defines itself as a service that uh, transports tr financial transactions over the internet, well, they, have, they operate with two uh, authoritative name servers. They self-host. NS1 is on the right here, and NS2 is on the left. They experienced simultaneous hijacks. Initially, it's very hard to see. The, the first one is only like five or so peers picked it up. They changed their BGP communities to uh, increase the, the, um, the propagation. And then in the in second instance, uh, the route went a little farther and was picked up by a few more uh, ASs. Uh, at this time, then, uh, people started to complain about having trouble accessing this uh, because this was having some impact on business. Um, we should mention here that in this case, because these companies are not uh, required to discuss these incidents publicly or I'm not I'm not, I don't have any access to uh, uh, any kind of confidential analysis of this, uh, we don't know how much money or if any money at all was, was stolen. Maybe it was unsuccessful. Uh, regardless from a technical standpoint, from a technical community, uh, these are pretty concerning events. So the hijacks didn't stop there. There was, uh, it kept going, there was more. Now I'm not gonna enumerate every single one. We wrote up a blog post about this where we, where we did so. I'll just mention a couple more because they start to, a pattern starts to emerge. There's a lot of similarities in these uh, of how they are going about doing this. In this case, uh, Mercury Payment Systems, a major credit card processing company, Operate has two authoritative name servers uh, in this graphic on the left and on the right. Those are the two hijacks, again, simultaneous hijacks. If you were an AS that accepted these hijack routes, then any of the queries going to the authoritative were going to an imposter uh, uh, DNS uh, authoritative server. For Vantive, it was another one, um, and they too have NS1 is on the left, NS2 is on the right. There were three particular incidents where they uh, experienced hijacks. And if we were to look at passive DNS to see where these queries were redirected to, because they weren't going to, um, you know, once they hit the authoritative, where did the authoritative tell, tell them to go? Well, in this case, uh, you know, months later after the Amazon incident, uh, they were sent to an IP address registered as in Curacao, but in reality it was announced also out of Luhansk, uh, Ukraine. Again, I don't know if that 
means that they are the same. Uh, there's clearly some, some overlap between these, uh, these two similar attacks. So here's how we think, uh, uh, the thinking here is how, how, how you can um, pull something like this off without your route actually getting propagated very far or even lasting very long. And so you can start with just a very brief hijack in the, in the second example that I just went through, they went, these things were only lasted, only needed to last minutes long. Uh, as long as uh, they get picked up by a public a DNS uh, service, then, uh, then the affected population could be very large. Um, and we theorize, we don't have this, uh, we don't have evidence for this step, but we theorize that you could, you could ensure that um, uh, you minimize the duration of this hijack by as soon as you start the hijack, then if, you're, if your goal was to poison the cache of a public DNS uh, service provider, so then start sending in queries on your own to prime it uh, until you get the, the bogus answer, and then you can re release the, the BGB hijack. Uh, and then it may last a long time because in the second, uh, in the second example, the TTLs were changed uh, to last a week, and so the DNS operators had to go and flush caches to remove this out of their system. Um, so then you were able to do something, a very brief incident, uh, a BGP incident could have a, 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 an impact that could potentially last for days. All right, so I think um, it's important to know that we have uh, people out there uh, trying to BGP hijack authoritative DNS for the purpose of misdirecting uh, uh, traffic. Uh, and for the time being, um, this we will likely see more incidents like this. Again, as I've mentioned, uh, they don't have to be uh, long-lasting or widely propagated in order to uh, have, have major impacts. And so a uh, an idea that uh, Joe Snyder had, ha had had when uh, we were discussing this uh, way back, maybe in the April incident, was that, you know, RPKI obviously not universally um, uh, deployed. However, you could probably um, make a big dent in the problem by taking all the authoritative, major authoritative services, uh, Route 53, Dyne, um, Ultra, others. Uh, these are companies with the wherewithal to sign routes. And, uh, and if the major public DNS providers then dropped invalids, then you could create kind of a secure core, even if that didn't get, uh, uh, even the route, even if the RPI didn't uh, get um, that much farther out. Um, and actually we're starting to see this come, uh, uh, come in together, uh, uh, become a reality where Route 53 uh, is now signing routes, likely in response to the April incident. Dyn's working on it. Um, uh, I think Cloudflare's announcing that they're going to be dropping invalids. So this is actually starting to come, uh, uh, come to become a reality, which is which is progress. So in this last story, this is a, a bit of a different uh, attack here. So um, this one is about. Uh, community response to try to remove a bad actor from the internet. Actual footage on the right. So this is taking down the BGP hijack factory as it was uh, uh, referred to. Uh, my friend Brian Krebs wrote up a uh, piece on this in his uh, uh, widely followed blog. Um, here's, here's what happened in this case. So a security researcher had written into the Nanog e email list a very lengthy email uh, about detailing all of these incidents that uh, BitCanal had been involved in. And he wasn't the only one. I've actually written in a, a blog, or blog post about routing security incidents and detailing hijacks that these guys did. Uh, they're also known as Ebony Horizons, is the retail name. Um, and it just seems like for many years, these guys would do this st uh, stuff uh, with impunity. There was no, uh, they, they would never get shut down. I don't know what the origin of BitCanal's name is, I'm imagining some sort of uncomfortable dental procedure for uh, your computer, but um, here's, a, here's a timeline of how this uh, bad actor got disconnected. So the initial email uh, went out on the 26th of June. Within a couple days, the primary transit providers, GTT and Cogent, to their credit, disconnected BitCanal on the 28th and, 20, uh, and 30th of June. Um, at that point, myself, Job, some other people interested in this uh, case, want to see what, you know, what would it take uh, if we all just tried to disconnect these guys because they're just rotten to the core. Um, and so we started following this, uh, uh, the plight of 
uh, BitCanal. And as it returned uh, to, it, it secured a new transit provider, Bix, who's a Belgian transit provider. We uh, brought, uh, brought evidence to them to let them know who their new customer is, and they pulled the plug on them. That's what this graph is along the bottom is a prefix announced by BitCanal getting dropped by GTD. They come back online via Bix, and then they go away uh, shortly after. So these guys have got a lot of uh, bad customers as well. Agora IT may not be a, a name that you're familiar with unless you're in the spam business. Spam House knows them well. Well, they were, they were using uh, BitCanal to hijack address space, send out spam. Um, once BitCanal started to have problems, they moved off BitCanal and uh, found a new transfer provider, a new hosting provider in Germany, Mirfar Big. Well, we went to uh, uh, talk to them about who their new customer was, and then they dropped them as a customer. Routed Solutions also uh, uh, moved off BitCanal when they started to lose transit, uh, went over to M247, activated on the 3rd of July, and disconnected on the, uh, on the, on the 12th. So what, at this point, uh, I, uh, a point I made to those involved was that you know a lot of their bad work that they do is also done at internet exchanges. Uh, there's some stuff that they announce through transit providers, but there's also quite a bit that they, uh, uh, other stuff that they send out specifically to peers, knowing that peers at internet exchanges uh, often don't monitor or look at their routes uh, very closely, they can get away with a lot. And so, uh, so we decided to identify where they were in, ex uh, in the exchanges and try to make sure that these guys all knew uh, who, their, uh, who this member of their platform was. Interestingly, uh, DKICS had already disconnected BitCanal last summer, uh, which is an interesting fact, and we'll come back to that. Uh, but Lynx and AMSIX, to their credit, looked at the case, looked at the evidence, and uh, disconnected on the 5th and the 7th of July. Uh, Hurricane Electric was providing a little bit of transit to BitCanal. They disconnected uh, on the 9th. Gigapix is a tr uh, IXP in Portugal. IP Telecom is a trans transit provider in Portugal. They both disconnected as well on the 10th of July. And at that point, these guys were disconnected completely from the internet. Um, to my knowledge, AS197426 uh, has not been in the global routing table since, save for a few stale routes that are still kicking around. Uh, we know that there's some Ebony Horizon address space being announced out of, uh, out of Russia right now, but it's not involved in hijacks, so uh, we'll move on to other things. So lessons learned. So it's often said that there's no, there are no uh, BGP police, but maybe sometimes there's BGP vigilantes. Um, in this case, before we give ourselves too, credit, too much credit, uh, they're really, uh, this is just one, you know, one bad actor in a, uh, it's a drop in the bucket, unfortunately. But it was important to go through this process to understand you know, what were the shortcomings uh, in the security posture of different entities. And one area that, uh, of lessons learned, it seemed, was in the IXPs. And the internet exchanges traditionally are not, uh, I've tried to avoid trying to get into policing all of the activity within their, uh, the routes exchanged by their, um, their members. And that's, uh, that's kind of changing uh, already. But um, I, th I think it's important to emphasize that the bad guys know uh, that they can uh, use, these, use this unique technology in the same way that legitimate uh, customers do, and that they can connect to many, um, uh, many other uh, peers uh, through uh, an air exchange. And, um, and therefore, there's, a, there, there's gonna be a certain responsibility on behalf of uh, the rest of the internet that uh, they, they can filter out or uh, remove bad actors when they arise. So one thing, uh, going back to the idea of that, of DKICS disconnecting last year, you know, we talked to some of these exchanges, they had no idea around, of the circumstances around that, uh, that ban that had taken place. And had they known, maybe they would have done something different, but it seemed like this, uh, there ought to be a better mechanism between security functions at exchanges to let each other know. It doesn't necessarily need to be public or on a website, but as long as somebody's letting each other know that uh, they had to kick somebody off uh, if, if you were operating an exchange and someone told you that, these, that a member had been just uh, kicked off another platform for flagrant violations, uh, would you preemptively disconnect them? Uh, maybe that's too drastic. Uh, something short of that, maybe just to put them on some sort of uh, probation or greater scrutiny, understand what it is they're doing, uh, and again, if they violate uh, policies, then disconnect them. Uh, we also encountered a couple of times where exchanges had policies about, around uh, disconnecting bad actors, 
how, with, and these policies required that they be recording uh, data uh, like in the form of MRT or PCAPs, something, some evidence, which is fine, which is a, a reasonable requirement. However, they also didn't have a mechanism running to collect that evidence, so they, it would be impossible for them to comply with their own uh, policy. In these cases, they were they accepted outs, outside data that was verifiable uh, and began uh, uh, logging, uh, logging like their route servers. Uh, that's something that um, there ought to be some set of uh, things that all uh, exchanges do in order to in implement their uh, security policies. And then an outgrowth of this was, a, uh, again, a discussion at a, with uh, Job and I of like what, what would be helpful uh, for uh, IXPs. And so we uh, kicked around this idea, and we've kind of built a prototype here. We haven't really made any announcements on it. It's really early in the works, but there's a working prototype here where we would peer with a, a route server, uh, uh, collect the, the routes exchanged, and then provide feedback on the, the, the quality of uh, filtering going on at the exchange. And then also breaking down, uh, peer, you know, member by member, who is who is who is it that you're filtering a lot of stuff from? Because maybe it's time to have a have a talk with that that member. Uh, if you're interested, uh, like I said, it's it's pretty early on. Um, I'd be happy to uh, add you to the uh, uh, to the project. Uh, come find me afterwards. All right, and this is a legal statement required by my new uh, corporate overlords. Thank you very much. I'll take any questions you have. Hi, Doc. Hey. Arturo. Very good presentation. Very Thank nice. You. Arturo Servin from Google. Um, about BitCanal, uh, we appear uh, BitCanal when we got the uh, the all the, the like the storm. Okay, great. Uh, at Google, we have a very uh, loose policy about peering. We peer with everybody, and we are very promiscuous, even with uh, spammers and other nasty people, because we prefer that they throw all the rubbish to us and not to the rest of the internet, so that we do it. So, I'm familiar with that approach, and, uh, and maybe it, it's debatable, but uh, you, it's like like yeah, you, the, you are gonna throw like a lot of bad bits to the internet. Don't throw it to everybody. We so just, uh, Arturo, let me just repeat yeah. out to this policy that Arturo is uh, talking about, and they're not the only Google's not the only one that does this. I, I'm aware of uh, quite a few who they 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 actually peer with uh, these bad actors for the purpose of uh, they don't want to they don't want to lose uh, sight of them. They'd rather ha connect them and surveil and see what they're doing. And then just block all the traffic from them, but but make them think that they're doing something, and so that's uh, that's one one approach. Uh, as long as you don't leak any of those yeah, routes exactly. out. Um, yeah. In this case, it was different because it was routing announcement, so that also is like complicated in, in our network. So we decided like, okay, just with the peer these guys, and also I reported that to Gigapix and and Hispanix because we were like. I think the, the last two I internet change point that they didn't uh, the peer and remove uh, BitCanal. So they asked me precisely the pickup and that information, so I have to ask my major engineers. But my point okay. here is like to ask Internet Change Point that these things, they might happen in the future. So we have to have this mechanism to report and remove the bad actors. And, 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 and I don't know why. In this case, it, because it was a big storm in Nanog and other places, so basically I point them like, okay, this is the discussion in Nanog. So you maybe don't need all the information from me, but just look at that uh, and, and yeah, first, no the, the nanog list can't solve all problems like in this case it helped uh, for sure uh but like there's a lot there's a lot of bit canals out there yeah. and we can't uh, just uh and, but we list. need the mechanism so i will push is internet change point to work on this because as you said the, the role is changing and, and 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 they need to like keep the pace because possibly this is going to happen later in the in the in the future and they will need to remove the bad actors from the from from the fabric all right thanks for sure Boa tarde, amigo. Eu vou perguntar em português, com vontade. É, primeiro é uma é uma colocação sobre. Ok? I'm not getting English. Ok? Ouvindo bem agora? One, one more. Yeah. Alô? Pronto. Okay. Yep. Eu vou perguntar em português, yeah, se ficar mais à vontade. E você responde em inglês e eu escuto a sua tradução. Primeiro, com relação aos mecanismos clássicos de, de mitigação para o problema que você expôs. Eu queria a sua, a sua opinião, porque tipo a falsificação de zona, DNSSEC, estaria mitigando. Para rotas, estamos, estamos discutindo aqui RPKI e ROA. É, 
qual é a sua opinião sobre a massificação dessas, desses mecanismos e como a Oracle está trabalhando nesse sentido? Após isso, eu tenho uma outra sobre o XP. Ok. Um, I guess the question is about, uh, is about um, uh, uh, DNSSEC and RPKI and uh, I guess my opinion of where it's at and um, what, we're, what we're trying to do. Um, let's see. I guess uh, um, I don't know where uh, the DNSSEC uh, uh, deployment stands. Uh, that's um, not an area I'm, I'm well, uh, uh, well versed in. The, um, as far as RPKI, uh, you know, we're starting to make some little steps forward. Uh, um, there's, there's a long way to go. It's not doing a whole lot at the moment uh, outside of a couple of uh, uh, providers. But um, as far as like what we're trying to do is we're trying to you know, follow that, that diagram here. So I'm part of uh, Dyn, the DNS uh, co a company that was acquired by Oracle. And so I guess I can only speak to us and that Uh, we are actively working on this uh, to try. I don't have a, a date. I'm not, I'm not personally working on it, but uh, uh, I know that we are working on to, to uh, sign routes, uh, enable others. The idea is uh, that if also if authoritative um, signed routes, then aside from just these, uh, um, sorry, against uh, sorry, just against the other public uh, public uh, recursive uh, services, then you know, internet exchange points could be a point where you can automate the dropping of invalids, and uh, those are those can do that on behalf of a bunch of other people. So the hope is, if you had a bunch of people signing stuff, then there are these points that you could um, potentially cut off, uh, you know, the, the hijack routes, um, and yeah, that would make progress. I guess it would get us a little farther. And is that a, you have another question? We have another. I, I will try to do it in English. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, uh, we have uh, this. Perhaps can be answered better by the last speaker than by you, but okay. I think you have the answer too. Uh, we have in Buenos Aires uh, one 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 from Cloudflare in our exchange point. If someone leaks uh, routes to this uh, IXP, uh, would there be danger? that uh, Cloudflare uh, would um, do a lookup of, of, of the DNS server and then uh, do uh, transport this information to the, uh, the world? Uh, sure, uh, I saw it. Do they the, the, the lookups from US or from the local server? I guess, I guess I, I uh, where, where, What is the danger zone? Is it only Buenos Aires or the world? Uh, let's see, so... Um, Yeah, I, I'm not. Uh, I'm not equipped to uh, uh, answer for Cloudflare, um, but we've got people here who can answer that. But I, uh, in theory, I mean, we're not going to know where all. We may know where the major uh, DNS authoritatives are, of like the, the ones that are DNS service providers. But like in the second example with the uh, the uh, payments processors, these guys all did this in house, uh, and so it's un unreasonable that we'll know where all of the uh, all the authoritatives of everything uh, are on the internet, and that creates you know. Uh, a, a place where um, if they're not signing and we, we, people don't know about them, uh, then there may not, it'd be hard to have anticipated uh, um, surviving some sort of a hijack involving them. So uh, I, I, you know, I believe, uh, you know, that I don't know, I don't know what, I don't want to, I don't want to say uh, any particular company's uh, susceptible to this uh, uh, beyond just the normal, um, you know, if they get, uh, if they, get, they accept a hijack, then they may send an authoritative query the wrong place, um, unless barring some sort of mechanism to stop that. Okay, thanks. Sure. Okay. Uh, one more question. All right. Agora, agora mais específico em relação ao projeto que você apresentou, sobre a limpeza de roteamento, ok? A solução que você propôs vai direto no problema de excluir o AS malicioso do roteamento da internet o que é fantástico. Existiam iniciativas... Listen. I'm sorry, I've just gone quiet. I hear, I hear some rustling. Ok. É... I'm sorry. I, ask a... I talk in English. Thank you. You, you, you project uh, is, is similar to, to UTRS from Tenkumri. Ok. Uh, 
a conventional autonomous system is a uh, scan participate or only for i or only for uh, for I, ix i'm sorry i i i don't think i understood the, the question we try try conventional, again conventional autonomous system can can participate from your project oh i see conventional um like a normal as is yes. that what you're saying, as yes. opposed to an exchange? Um, I guess this was built uh, precisely with a, an, an, an exchange um, in mind, but um, we also accept, we also do peering uh, for uh, other stuff where we will, um, uh, we have stuff we return, we give back to peers, so um, why don't we do that through another means? Um, we've already got existing mechanisms, this is how we have a big peering base, but I'm, uh, if you wanna come at, talk to me afterwards, uh, I'm happy to set you up. All right. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Muchas gracias. Okay. Thank you very much. Un aplauso. Bien. Ahora vamos a recibir 